Tankers, welcome back to one of my videos. Today we are going to be doing a tank review on the Tier 7 light tank, the AMX 1357, along with some Ace Tanker gameplay, some tips and tricks, and how to take this thing out on the battlefield. So, the first map we are going to be playing on is on Naval Frontier, and I'm going to be pushing on the same bush I did in my Lorraine video. If you did see that, I call this the TD or Medium Bush. And this is where I mostly put my semi-fast to mobile tank destroyers to clip out or shoot whatever vehicles try crossing, as you can see, like this low. Now, this tank has a 6 shell clip with an average of 90 damage per shell. Um, so it can do around 540 to 550 damage every clip. That is if every shell penetrates. Um, and it takes five seconds to shoot off every shell in the clip, and it's around a 10.21 second reload to reload the entire clip. Now, one of the downsides of this tank is penetration at being a 143. The AMX 1375 gets 144, however, the APCR is also very bad, being 195. It does not get high explosive, so that is one downside, but really, since the gun is such a small caliber at only being a 57mm, um, you're not going to be penning anything with high explosive anyways. Now, one big advantage with this tank is that you can actually technically have more shots in than an AMX 1375. If you bounce one shell in an AMX 1375, that's equivalent to two shots with this vehicle. So the upside is, is that you have more chances to penetrate your shells with this tank than you would in an AMX 1375, but then again, you have more chances to bounce shells. Um, personally, I feel this vehicle is actually really fun to run. As long as you're not having people that target you every game, you can actually run this tank around and do pretty decent, uh, upwards of 2,000 damage if you're a skilled player. Um, it's no Dracula, you're not going to be pulling out 3,000 damage that easily. My mastery was around 3,300 damage, so you, it's not the best tank for carrying games. This is just a tank to fun around it's more like a grave digger you can just have fun now the other downside is it actually isn't the fastest it goes 61 and it does take a while to reach there so it's not insanely quick um, it's pretty much average with the other light tanks in the game the gun accuracy is actually very good the dispersion is 0 .301 which beats the AMX 1375's 0.319 and the d gun depression is actually 7 degrees, which also beats the AMX 1375 6 degrees. This tank also, which is odd because most French tanks don't have good gun elevation, this tank actually comes with 13 degrees of gun elevation, unlike the 6 degrees of gun elevation the AMX 1375 has. So that is one big benefit. Um, this tank, the clip is actually very nice though. If you can get up behind somebody, it takes five seconds and you're gone. Um, my issue with the Lorraine and what I said about it in the video is that since it takes so long to shoot off the clip, you really can't, you can't help out your team because you're always fending for yourself with that super long clip reload of being 20 seconds and then you've got two and a half seconds between each shell. It's just such a hard tank to run, and it's not fun to run it because you have to work so hard to do well on it. The AMX 1357 is just this big bundle of fun where you can just annoy the enemy team, run away, and then pop out again and shoot three or four shells at them and run away. This tank is just really fun to run around with. Now one funny thing is this tank only has 300 horsepower, so its power to weight ratio isn't great. Um, but that's not the end of the world because it does get quick enough and it has a great camo rating since this tank is really, really small. Um, the hull armor is the same as the AMX 1375. It's 40 in the front, 20 in the sides, and 15 in the rear, and the turret is also the same. 
I'm not going to bring up a clip of the armor because really this tank doesn't have armor so there's no point to bring it up. Um, but this tank is a little bit smaller than the 1375 uh, that I'm aware of. So you should be able to dodge a little bit more with this tank. If you're a fan of light tanks and you love dumping shells into people, um, I would suggest to get this. This thing, this tank plays nothing like a Gravedigger other than the gun. The penetration of these shells is much worse than the Gravedigger. This tank requires much more skill than the Gravedigger. Um, as you can see, pretty much anything you come against will pen you. The average win rate in this tank is actually pretty high though, being 55% compared to the AMX 1375's 51%. Although only 121 players have played this tank in the past month. Now, the reason it is probably in the store, in my opinion, is because Wargaming isn't selling enough of them, and they want to see if they need to buff it, probably. Um, next update, they might buff this tank um, if it doesn't do well in these statistics, or they're not selling enough. Um, that's usually what Wargaming will do. Um... Usually the best maps for this tank are very open maps, uh, maps that you can run around in. This game I got saved by the bell, that KV-2 I think it was, that shot the SPIC saved my life, um, because I decided to miss a couple shells when coming after that uh, SPIC. Now one of the issues I will say with this tank is the turret speed is not the quickest. And the issue with that is when you're going 61 kilometers an hour trying to shoot at somebody, your turret will sometimes fall behind your tank and you won't actually be able to hit them with all your shells. And then they're just going to be shooting at you. Now, my opinion, the best type of autoloader is an autoloader where the clip reloads very quick. And that's because when you can shoot your clip off, and then go undetected and pop back out again, or you're trying to run away, I would rather have my clip do half the damage and reload than have to wait that entire time just because it takes so long to reload some of these autoloaders. Um, really, this autoloader is everything I wanted it to be when it first came out. Um, I'm not sure how much it costs. It's not super expensive that I'm aware of. Um, unless it's in the bundle, I'll check right now. Uh, the tank costs a total of, let's see, uh, 8,500 gold, so that roughly equivalents to $25, so it's not completely worth it. Um, I would not suggest to get the bundle, though. Um, really, the Lorraine 40T is just such a bad tank. You, you shouldn't run the Lorraine. It, it is probably the worst tank in the game, in my opinion, for a Tier 8 meet, um, premium. Type 59, there are so many better options than the Lorraine that you could get. It's just that... You, this, just don't get the bundle. That's what I'm trying to say. I would... If you really like light tanks, um, I would suggest to get this tank. Um... However, if you are still, again, like the Lorraine, if you're a new player, you don't really understand all the mechanics of the game, you're not the best, I wouldn't suggest to get this tank if you're looking for a tank to boost your stats or to grind credits, because Tier 7s, first of all, don't grind the most credits. If you wanted to grind credits, uh, get the T26E4. Um, that has the highest credit coefficient for a Tier 8 premium. And it's a pretty decent tank. And this tank has very bad penetration. It There's not many great attributes um, for a medium or non-medium-ish player. To where you'd need a very skilled player to be able to pull out great games in this vehicle. Now, this game was my master game. And this game was very hard to do. Um, it probably took me about two hours of playing this vehicle non-stop to actually get a mastery for YouTube because, unfortunately, Wargaming gets rid of replays that are old. So all of my old replays were deleted when this tank came out. Um, but you can see this penetration is just not the best. I, uh, 
I did get that IS-3 rear though. Um, you'll see me come up against that IS-3 later. Um, the accuracy is not the best too. You'll see just bounce after bounce on these tanks. You really can't pen them and since the gun isn't super accurate you have a really hard time of penning, penning these vehicles. Because one little slip up like on that KV-3, if it misses that turret, you're done. It can't penetrate anything else. Even it has a hard time getting through that turret. Now, since this gun is really, really quick at shooting um, and reloading, you can usually be able to out-reload your opponent once you do get the shell. Now, one thing I will say, if you're a tank destroyer player and you see a light tank, do not rush it alone. Because this Yag Panther 2 rushed me, and if you look on the minimap at the bottom, oh, completely away from his entire team, and now he is pretty much screwed because he did that. Um, you can use this to your advantage. Um, you can really, if the best way to run a light tank, to be honest, is to isolate an opponent and to clip them out and then run away. Um, if you can isolate a medium tank away from the team or a heavy tank, if you can get him to follow you and bring him out away from the team and then you can start circling him, you will be golden. Um, but that takes a lot of practice to do that, because these two tanks over here I've pretty much baited into my uh, using, um, and now I can just clip them out one at a time as much as I want. Now I have no clue how these shells are penning my S3 as it's showing that it's red, um, but I'll take it. My S3 misses, he's probably not one of the best players, um, but it's fine. Now the APCR does have enough penetration to mostly go through all the tier 8 heavies. Um, if you're needing to fire APCR this much that you can't penetrate these heavy tanks from the front, you shouldn't be shooting at heavy tanks from the front in the first place with a light tank. So if you're one of those players that starts complaining that the penetration is terrible on this tank, you're not running it right because you should be flanking the enemy. You shouldn't be trying to 1v1 a heavy tank like the low. You will never pen it from the front, and it'll pretty much kill you every time. But when you come up behind the low, and it's distracted, you can just clip this thing out, and then run away. And that's why this tank is very good. You can see the first clip did 595 damage. That's a crazy amount of damage. And then you reload so quick, you're able to put another two shells in them before the uh, teammates reload. Too bad I couldn't have done any more damage there. Um, but you can see 3.4 thousand damage is not insane for tier 7 when you can pull out a Helsing and do 5,000 or an SU-152. Um, but it is good enough to get the mastery. So if you're, if you're trying to get a mastery, um, this tank isn't going to be super hard to get one. So overall, I will say, if you want to have a little bit of fun and you don't care about um, credits or really um, trying to pad your win rate, this tank is perfect. Um, but if you are trying to get your credits and win rate up, don't run this vehicle. It will not benefit you. Um, thanks for watching my video. I will make another one soon, and have a good one.